This is really getting on my nerves. Man, you are really getting on my nerves. COVID? Schoology? Zoom? They're all on my last nerve. Where exactly did that phrase come from? You're getting on my nerves. Well, in 1922, James Joyce, an Irish novelist, used this phrase in his novel, Ulysses. And I guess you can say that this phrase not only stood out to his readers, but to every teacher, student, counselor, parent, and administrator that is trying to navigate this COVID-19, COVID-20, gosh, possibly COVID-21 era. Let's talk about nerves, also known as neurons. A neuron is a nerve cell, and neurons are the basic building blocks of the nervous system. Here are five interesting facts about the neurons. There are as many neurons in the human brain as stars in the Milky Way. If we were to line up all of the neurons in your body, the length would be about 600 miles. That's approximately from Houston to Mobile, Alabama. The sciatic nerve, which is the longest neuron in our body, runs from the big toe to the base of your spine. That's over a meter long. The longest axon of a neuron is actually found in a giraffe, which is amazingly around 15 feet from the toe to the neck. While awake, our brain neurons generate between 10 and 25 watts of power or enough energy to power a light bulb. Like I said before, neurons are the basic building blocks of the nervous system, and they send messages or nerve impulses throughout the entire body. Neurons can be classified into three types, multipolar, bipolar, and unipolar. We're gonna focus on the structure of a multipolar neuron and the direction of a nerve impulse. All aboard! Let's take a ride on the nerve impulse train. The first stop on the nerve impulse train is the dendrite. Dendrites look like little trees, which is extremely fitting because the Greek word dendron means tree. Dendrites receive signals from other neurons, so they are considered to be the receivers. The second stop is the cell body, also known as the soma. Soma in Greek means body. It contains the nucleus, which we learned in the organelles lecture, has DNA. And it connects the dendrites to the axon, which is the third stop on the nerve impulse train. Notice that the axon has a myelin sheath, nodes of Ronvier. That is so much fun to say. Nodes of Ronvier. Nodes of Ronvier. Nodes of Ronvier. And Schwann cells. We will talk more about those in a bit. But for now, you need to know that the axon is a long fiber that transmits signals from the cell body to the axon terminals. The axon terminals are branches on the end of the axon that send the signal across the synapse to the dendrites of a different neuron. So we consider the axon terminals to be the transmitters. In a nutshell, the direction of a nerve impulse is dendrite, cell body, axon, synapse, repeat. Dendrite, cell body, axon, synapse, repeat. Dendrite, cell body, axon, synapse, repeat. Let's see what you remember. The are the receivers and the are the transmitters. If you said dendrites and axon terminals, you are correct. The dendrites receive signals and the axon terminals transmit the signals. Remember, dendrite cell body axon synapse repeat. All right, let's move on to the two main parts of the nervous system. The central nervous system, known as CNS, and the peripheral nervous system, known as PNS. The CNS is made up of your brain and spinal cord. Notice that the brain and spinal cord are down the center, and the PNS, which is made up of cranial and spinal nerves, make up the outer regions outside of the CNS. Periphery actually means outer regions. 
The two functional divisions of the peripheral nervous system are the afferent and efferent divisions. The afferent division refers to sensory neurons that carry signals towards the CNS, and the efferent division refers to motor neurons that carry signals away from the CNS to the muscles and glands. The muscles and glands are also known as effector organs. An easy way to remember afferent versus efferent is that afferent arrives at the CNS and efferent exits the CNS. Moving forward, when you hear the word sensory, your five senses should come to mind. Taste, touch, sight, hearing, and smell. And when you hear the word motor or effector, the words muscle and movement should come to mind. Let's see what you know. If I burn my fingers while picking up a hot mug, which motor neuron delivered the message to my skeletal muscles so I can move my fingers away from the mug? Is it afferent or efferent? If you said efferent, you are right. Remember, efferent refers to your motor neurons, and the words muscle and movement should come to mind when you hear the word motor. How about this? When you smell chocolate chip cookies baking in the oven, which neuron delivers the sense of smell to your brain? Afferent or efferent? If you said afferent, you are right. Remember, afferent refers to your sensory neurons, and your sensory neurons detect taste, touch, sight, hearing, and smelling those delicious cookies. Notice that the CNS allows communication between the afferent sensory and efferent motor divisions. So we call the CNS the integration or processing center. Interneurons are located in the CNS that help pass the signals between the sensory and motor neurons. That makes sense because the word inter means between. Let's look at three examples so we can fully understand this chart. You just finished working out and you really want some water. When your eyes see the water, remember sight is one of your five senses, Sensory neurons in the afferent division carry the signal to the integration center known as your CNS. The interneurons that are in the CNS will pass the signal to the efferent division. But does it go to the somatic nervous system or autonomic nervous system? Remember, soma means body. So the somatic nervous system controls voluntary body movements. The autonomic nervous system, the word autonomic reminds me of the word automatic. So the autonomic nervous system happens unconsciously. Since I voluntarily want to pick up this water and drink it, the interneurons that are in the CNS pass the signals to the motor neurons of the somatic nervous system. And the motor neurons deliver the signals to your skeletal muscles that allow you to pick up the glass of water and drink it. Could you imagine if you had to tell your body all of these steps every time you wanted to eat or drink? Whew, that would be rough. It's Saturday night and you're bored because COVID has messed up your plans for over six months. All of a sudden you hear a knock at the door. When you open it, you see the game Jumanji on your doorstep. Out of curiosity, you open it and it says, as you hear the thunder, remember hearing is one of your five senses, sensory neurons in the afferent division carry the signal to the integration center known as your CNS. The interneurons that are in the CNS will pass the signal to the efferent division, but does it go to the somatic nervous system or autonomic nervous system? As the thunder gets louder, your brain is now on high alert. 
your breathing accelerates, digestion slows down, your bladder relaxes, and your heart rate and blood pressure rise. You don't have any control over these actions, so the interneurons that are in your CNS pass the signals to the autonomic nervous system. So now we are at sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic is known as fight or flight. Since this division takes over to deal with threats in the body, I like to remember that sympathetic and stress start with the letter S. Parasympathetic is known as rest and repair. Since this division coordinates the body's normal resting activities, I like to remember that parasympathetic and peace both start with the letter P. I don't know about you, but this thunder is really stressing me out. So the signal took the sympathetic route. The animals have stopped chasing you and you look back and you see that they're all gone. Once you've outrun the stampede of animals and you no longer see them, the sensory neurons in the afferent division carry the signal to the CNS. The interneurons that are in the CNS will pass the signal to the efferent division, but does it go to the somatic nervous system or autonomic nervous system? Well, now that the threat of being trampled on has passed, your breathing slows down, digestion speeds up, your bladder constricts, and your heart rate and blood pressure decrease. You don't have any control over these actions, so the interneurons that are in the CNS pass the signals to the autonomic nervous system. Since your body is now in the rest and repair stage, the signal took the parasympathetic route. The last thing we'll cover today are the cells of the nervous system. Neurons are cells that conduct impulses and the neuroglia or glial cells provide support and structure to the neurons. Neuroglia is the glue of the nervous system. Let's call them neuroglua. <laughs> there are five glial cells that you need to know. Astrocytes, microglia, epidermal cells, oligodendrocytes, and Schwann cells. It would be a great idea if you pause this video and make this chart on your own sheet of paper so you can refer back to it when you are studying. Let's start with the astrocytes. The Houston Astros are a professional baseball team here in Houston, Texas. Look at their logo. Why would they use a star for their logo? Well, the root word astro or astron means star. So what do you think astrocytes resemble? If you guessed a star, that is correct. Astrocytes are only found in the CNS and they are the largest and most numerous type of glia in the nervous system. There are numerous stars in our galaxy. So I like to think there are a large number of astrocytes in our body. Astrocytes provide nutrients for the neurons and help form the blood-brain barrier, BBB. The blood-brain barrier prevents certain substances from crossing into the extracellular fluid of the central nervous system. Next, we have the microglia. The root word micro means small, so these cells are small, stationary, and only found in the CNS. Don't let their size fool you, though. If your brain tissue becomes inflamed, these cells can engulf and destroy microorganisms and cellular debris by phagocytosis. Phago means eating, cyte means cell, and osis means process. So phagocytosis is a process by which a cell called a phagocyte eats or ingests other cells or particles. Third on our list are the ependymal cells. These cells, which are also found in the CNS, resemble epithelial cells. If you watched my histology lecture, we learned that epithelial cells form the covering of body surfaces and they also line body cavities and hollow organs. Well, that's the job of ependymal cells. They line the fluid-filled cavities in the brain and spinal cord. 
Ependymal cells also have cilia, which we learned in the histology lecture, waft substances. Cilia on the ependymal cells helps to circulate the cerebrospinal fluid, also known as CSF. Next up, we have the oligodendrocytes. Oligo means few, dendro means tree, and site means cells. So, oligodendrocytes are cells with few branches. These cells not only hold the nerve fibers together, but they produce the myelin sheath around the nerve fibers of the CNS. We will talk about the function of the myelin sheath in a little bit. Last on our list are the Schwann cells. The Schwann cells are found in the PNS. Let's look back at this picture. Remember, I mentioned that the axon has a myelin sheath, nodes of Ronvier, nodes of Ronvier, nodes of Ronvier, nodes of Ronvier, and Schwann cells. Well, now we can talk more about them. Schwann cells produce the myelin sheath around the nerve fibers of the PNS. This is a good time for us to talk about the myelin sheath that the oligodendrocytes produce and the myelin sheath that the Schwann cells produce. Think about myelin as the insulation around an electrical wire. Myelin allows electrical impulses to transmit quickly along nerve cells. And when I say quick, I mean quick. When the nerve fibers are myelinated, meaning they are covered with myelin, the electrical impulse moves approximately 340 miles per hour. Like I mentioned before, both oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells produce the myelin sheath. But notice that the myelin sheath produced by the oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells is not continuous. These gaps are called the nodes of Ronvier. Since these gaps are present, the electrical signal can jump from one node of Ronvier to another. That's what allows the signal to move so quickly. But what if the fiber isn't myelinated? Well, the signal would still travel down the axon, but at a much slower pace, because the signal would have to travel along the length of the entire axon. The electrical impulse of a myelinated nerve fiber travels 340 miles per hour. The electrical impulse of an unmyelinated fiber travels between 1 and 22 miles per hour. That is much slower. Wow, we've covered a lot. We talked about the structure of a neuron, CNS versus PNS, the afferent division versus efferent division, somatic versus autonomic, parasympathetic versus sympathetic, and the five glial cells. I hope this helped, and I'll see you soon. Science G, signing out.